Get on a Brett, welcome to the podcast. Uh, sorry that took a while. We're just here to discuss your um, the app that you guys are working on. Uh, we'll, we've got a bunch of questions to ask you, but we'll just start first of all just with a quick introduction about yourself and uh, what your company is doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, f- first of all, you know, obviously uh, a pleasure and a privilege to be here and, and for you guys uh, inviting us in, you know, for this podcast. So just a little bit about us. Um, we we originally launched as explore.com. Uh, which a lot of people do know us as a, as an online travel agency. Um, so since the pandemic, actually, we, uh, you know, as we like to say, a lot of people went into hibernation. We went into innovation. So we had to sort of look at ways in which we could pivot. Um, just understanding the challenges that, you know, um, the whole Pacific was experiencing with uh, the pandemic closing up our borders and just relying so much on tourism. So we've, we've pivoted a lot in towards the technology side of things now and, and how we can help improve that in the Pacific region. So uh, because of our pivot, we've also pivoted our branding, um, and have re- we're relaunching as a company under Smarty. Smarty. Um, yeah, so that's that's happening all this year when we launch our our app, yeah. um, as well as our web platform that all comes with it. So the the major shareholders in the company at the moment is myself and and my business partner Jim Glassy, who who actually comes from 34 years in the banking industry. So right, right. Uh, we've got a strong team um, at the top, and um, yeah, we're excited to get into to what we're launching. Yeah. How long have you? Guys- been at this for? Uh, well, Explore, Explore.com, when I built the online travel agency, was actually probably six six odd years ago mm. I started building it out. Um, but the the new uh, fintech approach that we're doing now has been for about the last two years uh, in development. So yeah. we're, we're very close to launch at the end of this year. Right. And what was the the reason for launching the Smarty app? What, what what were the issues that you guys were seeing in the market? Yeah, so I mean, this sort of goes back way back in uh, 2008 when, um, you know, uh, I, I say the story to a lot of people is I built the first e-commerce platform in the Cook Islands and back then was for Turtles Tees and, um, you know, we needed, we needed an e-commerce solution where you could accept payments um, from international credit cards, obviously, so he could ship out his orders. And the only solution back then was PayPal. Mm. Um, And as most of us know, the challenge that we have in the Pacific region is PayPal doesn't work with local banks. So uh, you have to have a business registered as well as um, a bank account in New Zealand to accept payments. So there's there's limitations that, that come with that. And that was back in 2008. I mean, we're, you know, 14 going on 15 years mm-hmm. later, and it's essentially still the same. So, you know, I've, I've always had that belief that, you know, with technology today, we should be able to, to bring better solutions to the Pacific Islands. So, you know, when I when I showed Jimmy um, what I was getting into, and because of his background in the banking, uh, you know, he, he his eyes lit up straight away and, and just saw the opportunity there. So, he, you know, I was excited for him to come on board with us. And through the journey, what, what were some of the challenges that, that you guys ran into? Because I know we discussed that earlier when we were having a chat with you. Yeah, I'd say that the, there's two main challenges, um, definitely in the technology world uh, the, the biggest one is obviously financing um, you know get, having engineers and developers in this field uh, is a very specialized skill set so you very very hard to find that locally um, anywhere in the Pacific even in New Zealand Australia so it's it's sort of something that you have to look outside and uh, I mean once you start diving into you know the USA and Europe your cost obviously goes up quite considerably. So financing is definitely a huge challenge in this space. Um, we've managed to get through very comfortably up until this point. Um, and then the second thing is kind of what I just touched on too, is actually having uh, the the talent, the skill set. You know, So we would love to have it uh, local and employ local people, but um, unfortunately it's not sort of focus in our education system and the IT and technology side of things, uh, which I do hope and we actually plan to be involved with um, as we continue in the future to try and help encourage and and lift up that skill set in the region. Right. So, because uh, we were talking before the before we started, you think of bringing people in? Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, you know, as I said, we we, we can't. We can't find the talent locally. So I've been working, you know, I've been in web development since 2000. So 20 plus years I've been doing this and I've always worked with people internationally, naturally. Uh, but with what we're launching and because we're launching a fintech company, which by the way, for those that don't know, it's uh, financial technology. So because we're moving into this space, we want to have our own IT in-house. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's vital and it's what is missing with this type of service in the Pacific. As I said, you know, if there's any sort of payment solutions that we're we're all familiar with or even the online banking and, and whatever it might be if you run into to technology 
technological issues, there's really not much in customer support and tech support behind it. So, you know, we're not only trying to provide the, the tech solutions, but we actually want to have the IT talent right there with us too. So yeah. if we need to fix something, we can get it done. Yeah, especially so. on launch, because, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> things things can always go wrong, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and, and that's, that's really important for us, as well as uh, being part of our customer service um, yeah. uh, focus that we want to always have 24-7 yeah. support there. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, you've gone through this journey for the last couple of months. In hindsight, what would be some of the things that you'd probably do different or um, any lessons learned? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's there's always got to be lessons learned. So yeah. If you haven't learned anything along the way, then you're kind of missing something, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so, no, d definitely for us, I mean, and like I said, I've been in IT for a while, but I still continue to learn as I, as I do new projects and bigger projects like this one. And the biggest one for us was finance. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to go into this sort of space, which is not touched in the Pacific in a way, um, requires a lot of finance. And because we were sort of uh, restricted on our budget, you know, we tried to look at options of, okay, how could we only spend X amount, uh, which would actually take, you know, twice as long. Uh, so probably the biggest lesson in this sort of space was, it, well, is that, you know, we, we wish we probably arranged more financing upfront, paid a bit more for the tech and support so we could actually get the product out a lot quicker. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's taken time. Um, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff, so we want to make sure everything looks perfect and, and works smoothly. Yeah. Uh, so that that has drawn out things a bit uh, a bit longer than we anticipated, mm -hmm. um, but we're we're pretty close to launching this yeah. year now. Because uh, over here, I don't think people are aware of how much these things actually cost to design and build and yeah, get it launched. Why well, exactly? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, everyone's always sort of driving past my office and they go, oh, "Man, we saw you there at eleven o'clock or yeah. midnight, and the lights still on." They don't know what we're doing, but. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, they don't realize, you know, the, the amount of money that needs to go into this, but mm -hmm. also to the time, because as I said, we've got to work with talent internationally. Yeah. They're on a different time zone. Exactly. So not only do I have to be in the office during our office hours, I got to be in the office all night as well, because they're on a 12 hour different schedule. So, yeah. you know, I got to be available to work with the team. And, and again, this all comes back to why we want to bring in the talent locally as well. Yeah. So I can turn around and just say, you know, hey, I know th this is what we want to do. Can you get to it? Um, yeah. and, and that's vital for us and really important yeah. with our technology. In terms of like uh, government support, you think there'd be opportunities there where government could do the financing part or help you guys out? Like what would be the some of the some of your suggestions to, to government and policymakers that are yeah i i think um as funny as this might sound yeah. i actually think the pandemic in a way has put more spotlight on what it should have been a yeah. long time ago it's not just tourism we do need to look at the other sectors that are really important here mm -hmm. and for me i i i live i lived in the u.s i schooled there university and i lived in chicago for seven years and i was always amongst um, the tech and the opportunity you know the land of the free as they yeah. say in america uh and, and the reason i moved back to the cook islands was you know with my experience i believe the impact that i could make here was immense i believed that the opportunities here are immense. Mm. Um, but in order to actually take advantage of those, we really do need government yeah. helping. And and I do hope that since the pandemic, I think everyone sort of switched to say, wow, we can't just rely on tourism. What other sectors can the country look at? And and I hope now that, uh, you know, with, with the efforts of you guys and, and um, the other governments overseas trying to put financing towards e-commerce, I really do hope our government is, is really paying attention to this, not just in the Cook Islands, the whole South Pacific. I mean, it's yeah. needed. Um, and, and that's what we're doing. That's why we're doing what we're doing but we can't push it to the scale that we need it to be yeah. in order to really take uh, a good control of the market so that everyone benefits. Yeah, yeah. And they need to get behind it with financing, with any kind of you know hands-on support that they can provide too. But definitely the financing side is, is, yeah, really is that's important. so important. It, it's Because it's, the Silicon Valley model, right? They've got tech companies around and then venture capitalists and they provide the financing. But in the Pacific, that setup just isn't there. So you're going to need money from somewhere. Right? Correct. So, yeah, I mean, uh, myself and a few others locally, you know, we've, we've invested in startups in, in yeah. Silicon Valley and, and we've got it from the ground up. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of money. And then that's only stage one of it yeah. because we have to get our concept out there and then we have to build the team. So then now we need more financing. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking millions of dollars. Yeah. 
Uh, and it's a lot easier in countries like the US and Europe where they've got larger companies that can get behind all of this because yeah. they see the opportunities. For us, we don't have that. You know, there's, there's not large enough companies here that will go, all right, we've got X amount of cash in the bank. Let's throw, you know, 500,000, a million at this business idea or 100,000 over here and hope that one out of 10 of them is going to hit and we get a hundredfold back on our money. Yeah. That's how it works out there. Yeah. For here, it doesn't. So the only way really, and, and it goes back again to the, the previous question, how can government be involved? Yeah. That's how. I mean, we, we need that support in order to take ideas of what, what we have to another level. Because I think that's important. I think Silicon Valley started off from government injection. A bunch of companies, I think, in the hardware space, they became successful and then they reinvested the money back into the software side things. And that's how that whole cycle at Silicon Valley started. So I think it's important that you mention that because that, that may be a model that we can, I mean, government's got to step up and put some money in, serious money. Yep. Um, and then I think things will will move. So you have stuff for the startup, scale up, and then, you know, finally getting to market and stuff. Um, okay, last question. And then uh, I, might, I might ask you a few uh, add-on questions. Um, what could be done from donors and development partners you think in terms of helping businesses succeed in this in this journey would it be the, similar to what governments would do yeah absolutely and, and you know it's um, if we look at the services that we're launching on smarty so I mean you know we're what we're launching is a super app mm -hmm. right and the concept is is one app that has multiple services. So at the moment we're so used to on your phone. If you wanna you wanna get a ride, as an example overseas, you open up Uber. If you yeah. wanna order food, it's Uber Eats. If, if you wanna read the news, there's an app for that, and et cetera, et cetera. Whereas we're launching one app that has all of those within the single platform. So that's why it's referred to as a super app. Um, so for us in Smarty, we've got a payment platform. So if we wanna send money instantly to each other, yeah. that's through Smart Pay. We've got ride share like Uber that we're launching. So it's smart ride, there's food, we're smart food, mm. et cetera, et cetera. So the things that we are going to be moving into as well, um, the, the, the beauty of the platform which we're building is it's, it's designed to be very scalable yep. um, and modular based, meaning we can easily add on more products. I mean, if you came to me and said, Brett, you know, I think it'd be a great idea to uh, studio booking service mm -hmm. on your app, we could have it launched in about two weeks. Right, right. Right. So if you went to... And, and that would be because you got the developers here and... That and, and, and platform? Correct. And, right. and, and because of also my knowledge of the setups, you know, I've been doing this for 20-odd yeah, yeah. years, um, you know, we've designed it so that we know, okay, well, this, this shouldn't be that difficult for us to integrate it into our whole platform that's already there, including a payment solution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this goes back to the question, sorry to draw that out, but what you were asking is how could the other, how could businesses mm -hmm. sort of contribute towards this? <coughs> Excuse me. In, in a way, as we touched on with the US, these larger corporations looking at trying to diversify their funding mm -hmm. right where are startups that we can invest in where are stocks that we can buy we don't have any of that here really mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're trying to change and we're trying to bring those opportunities forward for the businesses because we're also looking to bring in stock training mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies marketplaces etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. so there's other avenues there that not just the businesses can start diversifying their funds our local people too. Yeah. I mean, if I asked you or if I asked Mama at the market, hey, do you want to buy some Google stock? She wouldn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so our idea is pull out your phone, just go to Smart Stocks, yeah. and you can buy whatever you want right there. Just $2, $3, you can buy anything. Um, so we want to bring all of that to the islands mm -hmm. uh, and make it just streamlined and easy for the users and the businesses yeah. to, to invest in. I know you guys have been talking to a bunch of businesses, and how's the response been so far? Overwhelming, to yeah. be honest. Um, yeah, because the, the tech that we have, so, um, you know, we've got a, the, the main backbone of our system is our payment solution. So mm -hmm. I can, just through my mobile phone, I can send you funds yeah. instantly just by putting in your mobile number or email address and you'll receive it straight away on your phone. The businesses also could pay their staff and they could be in the outer islands and they'll get it instantly on their mm -hmm. phone. Away they go, they can start shopping or send it to the next yeah. person. There's no delays anymore for bank transfers and waiting for it to clear from this bank to that bank. It's all instant and user to user is completely free. That That's... That's huge for us, coming out with that. And then we've also got uh, our PayPal service that goes with it. And and that's so that, for example, the accommodation industry mm. can now accept payments online, international credit cards, yeah. and that'll come through locally right on your phone. So again, going to Mama at the market who's mm -hmm. selling Kiko hats, we can now let her sell her stuff internationally yeah. today. Right. So that's, that's the idea. We want to bring the power of that technology, which we all have in the palm of our hands on mm. phones. 
Um, so, you know, the, just presenting that to the businesses and the, the accommodation sector is a big one, mm-hmm. um, has, has been a bit of a jaw dropper for a lot of people because mm-hmm. uh, we're really bringing some innovative technology that's normal out in the big world, yep. um, but we, we haven't been focusing on it here. And we've kind of been limited and restricted. You know, the, the only really uh, financial solutions we have at the moment are through the banks. They've never had partnership opportunities or services such as ours that can work in, in coalition with them to help better improve the services for for our, for our locals and the businesses yeah. um, and I think the the businesses that we've shown this to so far see that and yeah, the, you know yeah. their eyes just light up and go oh my god wow we see the potential here this is yeah. massive so it's, it's been great nice any uh, time frames on the launch I know it's difficult in the tech space to predict these things but <laughs> if you had everything your way when would you yeah so we're, to... we're planning to launch this year before Christmas right. um, so we're, we're pretty we're pretty close uh, November is what we're pushing for uh, December would be the latest and yeah we're, we're planning to launch in the Cook Islands <clears throat> I have a marketing company named Jason so we're across nine of the Pacific countries so the idea is you know we've got a foothold in those countries you know I've got two and a half three thousand client base already across the region mm. so we want to launch it here we're pretty confident we're going to get a great uptake from the users and businesses on the island and then from there you know we're going to take this model and yep. just multiply it out right across nice. the pacific and even with new zealand and australia so the goal is actually you know from me to you if i want to send money family in australia or new zealand it's instant mm-hmm. and it's free there's no waiting one to three days there's no paying fees for it to be sent over uh you know we want to try and cut all that out and just streamline it for everyone so we're excited to get this launch this year it's nice um I think that's all my questions. Do you have anything else you want to mention? or? Um, no, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, the efforts of you guys doing these sort of um, podcasts and, and obviously the governments, as I said, um, especially overseas, trying to put funds towards the e-commerce solutions and, and trying to help accelerate that in the Pacific, I think has been brilliant. And I do hope that our government really get behind this. Um, I know if we got proper support, we could really do this well and it could change the country in a very positive way and and just create i think so many more opportunities for the businesses and for our locals with just investing their finances on one and and providing you know greater services for the islands our ride share food ordering stock training yeah. etc you name it so there's plenty of exciting things that we're getting into yeah now sounds good thanks for our meeting with us yeah. it, it's super exciting to hear what you guys are doing and uh, we'll probably have another catch up and probably do another one when, she, when you guys launch if that's okay with you sounds great yeah. excited and uh, good luck with everything that's coming out cool cheers thanks, buddy. thanks. all right